Hello and welcome to this tutorial in which we are going to look at how to solve this web programming question which came in the Cambridge A-level IT exams for October November 2023. Task 4. We are required to open 3heights.html in a web browser. So let's go into our source folder and open 3heights.html. So we have angle of inclination, distance from the tree, and then I height. So we are going to use these values to calculate the height of the tree. As required, I'm going to open both 3 height.html and th.js in a text editor. The editor I'm going to use for this tutorial is Visual Studio. So you have a 3 height.html here and th.js. So I'm going to quickly right click and select visual studio code and go back and do the same for th.js so in the th.js file we have been provided with a function called calculate we've also been provided with a variable angle factor which gives us a formula to compute its value The question says we should amend the 3 heighthtml page to use the th.js script. So let's go to the bottom half of our HTML file and locate the tag just before the body and enter a script tag. So in the first part of our script tag, let's enter some space there and add a source. And then we bring our th.js file in there. And then you save. So this script tag creates a connectivity between the HTML file and then the JavaScript file. Now, if you come back to our HTML file and look at the input tags, we realize that we have IDs like angle, distance, and view height. The values of these IDs will help us in calculating the height of the tree. When you come down further, you see the uh, button tag or our tag which holds the button. It has a function here on click calculate. So if we click on our calculate button, it should perform this calculate function which we will define in our javascript file over here so let's begin by declaring variables for the various ids we have in our html the first id we had was the angle for the angle we don't need to declare it because it's already used in the angle factor variable up here so the next thing we can concentrate on is the distance so i'm going to represent it with a d then I'll have a V height for view height. And then I'll have height itself for calculating the height of the tree. Now let's go ahead and define the variables we've declared. But before I continue, let's add a closing curly bracket to our function. And let's come to the next line. So I'll begin with the D, bring my equal sign. Let's go to our HTML and look for the ID for the distance, which is this. So to avoid spelling mistakes, I suggest you just copy and paste here. And then let's add our dot value because it's going to hold a value. Let's do the same for our view height. The ID is view height. So I'll copy the entire name, paste and add dot value. And the last one is the height itself. 
so for the height we need to refer to the formula that was given which is the angle factor multiplied by the distance plus the eye height so i'm going to open a bracket and bring in my angle factor multiplied by the distance which i represented with a d and we go out of the bracket and add our v height and then go ahead and save now after calculating for the height we need to display it as well so let's refer to our html and locate the id for displaying our height so over here we have the td tag which will display the calculated results and it has an id called three height result when we refer to the question paper this is the area we are referring to and when we click on the calculate button this is how the answer is supposed to be displayed it first begins with a text the height of the tree is 3.7 meters so to display our height let's begin by using the document.get element and the id we are going to use is three height results so i'm going to copy the entire name and paste it in our bracket and continue with dot inner html equal to then i'll add our text then i'm going to bring in the result which is height so I'm going to use a plus sign on both ends of our ID and then I continue with the remaining text. Now let's go ahead and save our script and go and refresh our page and try and enter some values. So this is our page of the height calculator and we are going to refer to the values in the question 25, 4 and 1.8 and the answer is supposed to be 3.7 25, 4, 1.8 and then we click on our button and this is what we have, we have 1.8 and a lot of numbers and then 0.8 at the end to fix this anomaly let's go back to our script and for every defined variable that we've declared the dot values we put them in bracket and precede it with number So this will convert our values to actual numbers. Like this. And then we can go ahead and save once again. And let's see. Refresh the page. Enter the values again. And let's see what happens. 25 for 1.8. So we have 3.6675 and let's have a look at what we have now on the question paper it's 3.7 so we need to round this up to 1 
to fix this we are going to define another variable here and we are going to use a method called to fixed now the to fix method rounds the string to a specified number of decimals so if you have a number with five decimal places at the end you write in the brackets of the method the number of decimal places you want to convert it to so the 5.567 results into 5.57 So back in our script file, just beneath the document dot, just above the document dot get elements, I'm going to define h and bring in my height because it's the height, the results that we want to convert dot to fixed, and in the bracket. We write one because we want to bring it down to just one decimal place next we come into our document dot get element and locate height the height we have here and change it to just h and now we save and let's go back to our and refresh and re-enter our figures sorry for 1.8 and hit the calculate button and then there we have it we have a 3.7 meters but i think we need to create some space between the values and then so we can simply come here and then locate our id in the text answer which is the h and just after the is you see here we add a space and just before the meters we add a space and then we save and refresh our page and enter our figures once again and there we have it the height of the tree is 3.7 meters next we need to create a button beneath this table that will clear the entire form so that we can re-enter a set of different values so let's take note of where the button is located it's located beneath the table so it's not part of the table so we are going to go into html and copy the content or the elements for the button we already have And I'm going to copy that and place it beneath the table. Yeah. Just like this. And I'm going to place it within a div tag. Let me cut the closing div and place it beneath the button. can hit ctrl s to save now the inscription on the button is going to be click to enter new data so we are going to change what is here and for the on click we are going to define a new function called clear content I did a mistake here so click like this click to enter new data and then this is clear content and then I hit save and then we refresh our page okay so we have the button on the side so I need to align this Let's go back into our HTML look for our div tag and type align center and 
we hit save refresh our page and there we have it beneath here and we also need to create some space and reduce the size of the height of the button when we make a reference you see the height of the button is slightly smaller than what we have here and the text is also a, li a little bit smaller so we can just make some quick changes so what we have here uh, is 12 points we can reduce it to 8 and reduce the height to say 30 and the width to say 200 hit ctrl s go back refresh we have something smaller and the text is a bit too small so i'm going to increase the size of the text a bit to say 10 and just after the table tag i'm going to provide some space by adding a br so we have something like so now let's head back to our javascript file and define the function we have declared so beneath the calculate function we enter some space and then i begin with another function called clear content And I bring my curly brackets and since we just want to clear the data we can use location dot reload to reload the entire web page and that in effect will clear any content that has been entered onto the page and output as well so hit ctrl s go back to our page refresh now i'm going to enter any figure calculate and hit the click to enter and it clears the entire table Now during this tutorial, we've been able to add the script file to the HTML, which provides the connectivity between the two files. We've also been able to add a new button beneath the table and declared a new function. And when you come to our JavaScript file, we have defined two functions or both functions, one for entering and calculating the data and the other one for clearing the entire content in effect reloading the page we have come to the end of another tutorial if you are new here and you enjoyed the video kindly hit the subscribe button you can leave your questions and suggestions in the comment section and i'll do my best to respond to them until we meet in the next video it's bye